Good morning, guys. Uh, this is Tom, and uh, I'm going to bring you a little video today about our saltwater swimming pool. This is the first saltwater pool I've ever had, uh, first one I've ever uh, got to deal with, and I've learned quite a bit. Um, as you can see behind me, ours out there cleaning a little bit in the entertainment area and sweeping a little bit, but the pool looks pretty good. Um, it's taken me a long time to get it that way, and I'm going to go through some of the steps that uh, I did and I learned along the way. So let's go see. Okay, as you can see, the pool is uh, fairly clean. Um, we just had a big rainstorm, so I do need to vacuum it. Um, now this pool is roughly 15,000 gallons of water. Um, and when we set this up, with the salt water system, we had to put a chlorine generator on the pump. So let's go back there and take a look at that. Say good morning. Good morning, guys. <laughs> always. As always, cleaning. <laughs> okay, here's our pump set up here, and this little uh, this little system is our chlorine generator. Take a look at it, and as you can see. Uh, the green light indicates that it's on, and the green percentage light uh, indicates that it is uh, working and changing the salt into chlorine. And that's how this system works. The pump uh, pulls the water through, and as the water through goes here, goes through the system. It goes through an electrolysis and it actually changes the chemical composition of the salt and turns it into a mild grade chlorine that is sent back into the pool. So you do not have to mess with chemicals, which is a good thing in my mind. I uh, never did like having store chlorine around and uh, putting raw chlorine in the pool, waiting for it to uh, dissolve. Plus you get the chlorine smell of the water. You, uh, you get all the bad effects of the chlorine, dries your skin out, burns your eyes. Uh, just not near as healthy as a salt water pool. So that's why we decided to go with salt. When the pool company came to originally install this and set the pool up, we had to make sure that we had the correct pH. Um, and you want your pH level pretty close to 7.2, which our pool was, and had zero chlorine in it. And that's what the manufacturer says to start the pool up. Well, they brought two very large sacks of salt. Uh, they were 40 kilos each. And 
I thought, wow, they're putting a lot of salt in this little pool. Well, I waited for about a week and uh, tested the water every day and produced zero chlorine. So I went back down and talked to them and uh, they sent someone back out to look at it and they said, well, the system is working. We just don't have enough salt in the pool. So I went down and I bought another bag of salt and I put the, another 40 kilos of salt in it. In the meantime, I did some research on saltwater pools and watched a bunch of YouTube videos on people who have uh, handled saltwater pools in the past and found out that uh, we needed much more salt in this pool. As a matter of fact, we needed over 400 pounds of salt in the pool just to get the chlorine generator to start functioning. I did not realize that the chlorine generator does not actually start producing chlorine until it reaches a certain level of salt. So what I did is I went down and I bought another two bags of salt and put five full sacks of salt in this pool, which at 40 kilos times five is 200 kilos, which is roughly 440 pounds of salt. And lo and behold, the chlorine test in the pool the very next day showed that I had chlorine being produced in the pool. So we cleaned it out really well. It had started turning green a little bit because we had let it sit for so long without the proper salt in it. And now it seems to be working really well. Uh, the water feels really good to your skin. You can dive underwater, open your eyes, your eyes don't burn. Uh, and we've got chlorine and proper pH. What I did also was I ordered a digital salinity tester so I can test how much salt is in the water. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here's the uh, digital tester for, it tests several things, but I use it mainly for uh, salinity, uh, telling me how much salt is in the water. So when you turn it on, you can see up at the very top there, you can see where it says salt and uh, PPM, that's parts per million, and it gives you what your uh, temperature is um, also of the water. So the manufacturer of the system that I have recommends that you have 32 to 3400 parts per million of salt. So we're going to run a little test here. Let me grab, let me grab a, a glass. And we're just going to take a little sample of water so we can do this inside. You only need enough for the probe to go in. Let's go back inside and we'll set this on the counter to where we can see. I'm trying to do this inside because as you uh, can probably hear, we've got a backhoe, small backhoe working out back. Uh, they're working on Scott's land and we'll be building on that soon. So what you do is you pull the cap off and in here you can see there's some electrodes uh, and you just set that down in your salt water and it'll start reading immediately as you can see and then you just leave it sit there for a while we're up to 2400 parts per million and what we're looking at is we're trying to get to uh, 32 to 3400 parts per million and you just leave it sit now 
if anybody out there knows much about these digital salinity testers, please let me know if you know how to calibrate these because I'm almost certain by every uh, formula that I've come across and used that we should be around 3,400 parts per million with the amount of salt that I've put in the pool. Uh, and this digital reader is still only going up to about 2,800 parts per million. So, if you guys can tell me, do I really need to put more salt in this pool? I've got 440 uh, pounds of salt in a 15,000 gallon pool as it stands right now. It looks good. The chlorine level is uh, producing chlorine. Um, and the water feels good, but the salinity tester does not show that I have the proper amount yet in this pool. So I'm not sure if I need to calibrate this piece of equipment or how to calibrate it really. Uh, so if you guys do know a little bit more than me about saltwater pools, please put in the comments and give me some suggestions. But I just wanted to let you know where I've stood on the pool right now and Har and I have, uh, we've cleaned it, we, we brush it a lot, we vacuum it. And uh, it's, so far we're real happy with it. Just not real certain if uh, we've done everything correctly or not. Let's go up here just a second. You can see what's going on over here. All of this area has now been cleared. They've built the old barracks back in the back. And they're going to be building a house there. And uh, uh, another structure here, another pool. They have not yet begun to work on our, uh, on our road here that was uh, supposed to be paved. It's, uh, it will be happening after they uh, get all of this land cleared and then they can do everything that they need to do. <clears throat> now she's finished her little sweeping job and she's mopping the floor. This is her daily routine. She does this every single day, seven days a week. Because there's lots of uh, um, dust. No, it's not a dust. It's like uh, from your feet. Do you call that? Dirt. Yeah, because when you step on like your feet, leave feet print. Yeah, you have dog prints, feet no, prints. Lots of your foot. My my feet my feet prints. Yeah. So I'm causing you work. No. Yeah. Ah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to see footprints. In reality, guys, we're getting a lot of dirt and dust from uh, the equipment that's going on, the digging and uh, the pushing of the ground and the dirt over there. That's why we have to clean a little bit more on the pool than usual. Looks like we've got some rain coming in. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. <laughs> Thank you guys for always watching our channel, even if it's boring, right? Yeah, yeah. even if it's boring. Yes. We've noticed that, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many people are still watching, uh, but uh, we've noticed that our amount of people that usually watch our videos has gone down since we finished the build and that's uh expected because this was a pretty much a channel showing you how to build a house and and how they did things here in the philippines and uh now that our house is built and we're just doing little improvements on it and gardening and stuff like that flowers a lot of people have uh, stopped watching. We're not good uh, YouTubers. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to say, guys, that uh, uh, 
what I want. It's just not me. I'm not good at, at doing this, and uh, I don't give advice to people. I'm not going to uh, ever do on my channels, you know, how to find a Filipina in the Philippines or how much it costs to live in the Philippines. Uh, in the future, what we will do is we'll bring you uh, things that we're doing in our lives and places that we go that we think are interesting. And that will be uh, what our channel will be about, showing you some of the builds that's going on next to us here, but mainly just what we're doing with our life here in the Philippines. Oh, I will give advice on how to find, to find a Filipina. You will? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Be nice. All right, be guys. Nice. Be nice. That's yes. that's what you need to do is be nice to find one. Yes, and what makes a Filipino happy is just like always eat. Always make, eat? Make them, uh, what do you call that? Full. Full. Always feed your Filipino yeah. and they would keep smiling. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next one.